Here she is. Hi, Ev. Hi, Nat. You all right, lovely? Yes, I am. Oh, I can't get my camera down. Is it two of us for now? Huh? I think it's just the two of us for, for now. Ah, Julie is here. No, there's a few. Nice. All right. All right, so um, I want to introduce you first and introduce this talk. Hopefully, this is something we'll do weekly. You are the first one to start this tribe talk with, and today it's with Nat, Natalie Jane Lal, actually, to call you properly. Uh, Nat, you are a yoga instructor in Atta Yoga. You are a sound healer. Um, you don't like all those titles. You prefer to call yourself a medicine woman. Yes. Right? Since or a facilitator. A facilitator, exactly. Helping people heal. And mainly you use voice and sound all together. Yeah. And so that's all related to sound, really, we can say, uh, to do so. So I just wanted to start with, like, maybe you can introduce yourself a bit and tell us how you got there and how you discovered sound healing. Okay. So, yeah, I um, had a bit of a breakdown in my life. Everything changed for me um, when I got divorced and, you know, kind of usual story. <laughs> um, I tried to continue having like a normal life after that, but quickly realized that actually everything had to change. So I wasn't happy in a nine to five job anymore and all of that stuff. So I trained to be a PT because at the time I was very much into my fitness and I'd always enjoyed doing that. But as soon as I qualified, it was like the times that I love to cook, right? But when I've cooked commercially, it took the fun out of it and I hated it actually. <laughs> so it's the same thing with that, right? It took the joy right out of it. So, and you know, there was a lot of, um, emphasis on high impact, high intensity. And, you know, I quickly got to the realization that I'm not 20 anymore. And so it needs to be more gentle, but still effective, right? So I'd always loved India and I thought, okay, I'm gonna do yoga teacher training, but instead of doing it here over a number of weekends and taking a year to get it done, I was like, let's go and immerse in this. And, um, you know, it was part of the empowerment of myself as a single person again and all of that stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, so I went to Rishikesh and I did intensive yoga training um, and it was great, but my life continued to fall apart while I was there. So many things <laughs> happened, um, which, you know, is just the universe's way of saying, yeah, does that in there, kid. <laughs> yeah, you're in front of yourself and you just, you have to face. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but what I quickly realized during that time, because, you know, you know yourself, you've done it, right? When you go to yoga school, you live it there's not really any time for anything else. So yeah. you do yoga and you live yoga and you eat yoga and you sleep yoga, right? Yeah. Um, but my favorite part of that was always the meditation, but the mantra. The mantra was the thing that kind of, re I looked forward to those classes, you know, and it really kind of ignited something in me. I always came out bouncing out of there. And I was, um, I knew that anyway, you know, I used to sing and like that kind of thing. I've always loved to sing, but, um, so that was that part of the yoga training and it didn't really register to me then but on my way around Rishikesh you know on your days off or your time off or whatever I saw a big billboard that said learn sound healing and I was like sound healing never heard of that before and I had no idea what that entailed but like a quick google search and I went through and I was like oh that's that's really interesting really different and I'm drawn to that kind of thing right different and interesting yeah so, um, you know, at the end of yoga training, I thought I'm just going to go home. I'm going to do the yoga, probably phase out the PT stuff. But that didn't happen. And three months later, I ended up in another intensive training in sound healing in Rishikesh again in India. Um, and you were there, actually. So you remember what that was like, right? <laughs> That's how we met, isn't it? Yeah. And when we say intense, it was intense, right? It was intense. Yeah, so there was a lot of mantra and there was some voice work in it, but the main focus was on Tibetan singing bowls and, you know, either as sound bathing, which is non-contact, 
or in the massage, right? Um, and I, can I interrupt you for a second? Because yeah. I think like, um, for us Westerners, mantras are like, seems to be like some kind of Hindu kind of prayers. Yeah. And we feel like this is a practice that, you know, these people have kind of thing of like singing. Mm. But that's also something that's part of sound healing. And we will have a talk about this, hopefully, um, with my Sanskrit teacher, I hope so, uh, on the power, the healing power of mantras. Because actually people don't realize very often that the way you pronounce things, the way you use your the sounds, your palate, dental sounds, whatever, yeah. emit um, vibration within the body already. And those vibrations are exactly the same, you know, have the same kind of effect. And it's following the same principle as what sound healing does. Yeah. It's frequencies and it's all vibration. And so already singing mantras and using sound healing with, because the training you're referring to, we used uh, Tibetan balls. Right. And it's funny that you say that it was intensive because I think being exposed to those sounds nonstop for days from morning to evening. Yeah. And just because it is so compact and, and just like all day long, you have it's almost like putting under the magnifier the effect that sound has on us. Right. Yeah. And it feels extremely intense. Sorry, I didn't mean to yeah, cut you off. I think right. that you're some right. We are having this talk also for people who are not so familiar with, you know, people feel like sound healing is some kind of magical, woo woo, you know, whatever that is kind of thing. But there is a science behind it, and that's what we're going to discuss today. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. The other interesting part about the mantra for me as well is, you know, I quite often use it as an active meditation because if you're singing, your breathing automatically falls into a rhythm, right? Yeah, and it's a calmed down rhythm that lowers your blood pressure. It lowers your brain waves. It's the same effect that you would get from meditation, but it's also taking your everyday mind out of the equation because if you're concentrating on that, you're not flooded with all the other thoughts that come in, right? And actually, on that, uh, very often, like sound healing is referred to as a passive meditation because it has to, it's part of what we call nada yoga which is a yeah. branch of yoga of like the classical five branches of yoga and that's exactly what it, it it does that's another way of unifying body and mind right except it's a passive way of it it's sometimes very difficult for people to sit down in nothingness yeah. And we tell them, oh, just look at your thoughts and let them pass by and all of these kind of things. And it's extremely difficult for people who are not, you know, trained in it or don't have a regular practice. And sound healing kind of bypasses and overcomes that hurdle because it does plunges you, it does plunge you, sorry, into this. We, we can talk about that. Shall we talk about this quickly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Brain waves and states. Yeah. You want to go there? Yeah, let's. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you, you want to talk about this? And no, I'll, so I'll chip in when I have a thought. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, we, like when you and I talk right now, we are concentrated, we are in gamma wave that's like a very a higher kind of range. And as soon as you practice sound healing or submit it to a a one-on-one -on -one heal, healing or or even a gong bath, suddenly after a while, and if you are ready not to resist, which is the other thing, yeah. you don't go against it. And if you decide that, okay, let me embrace what's going to happen to me, especially the discomfort. This is what people usually have a hard time with. They are lying down in a group and they're like, what the hell am I doing here? Like with all these crazy people. Yeah. And, you know, and I want to go and do my grocery shopping and I have a lot of, and pick up this, the kids that's from school or whatever there is that you have to do that day. And this is the discomfort. This is the mental part of us that says, that's resisting the change kind yes. of thing. But once you have decided to let yourself go in it, the brainwave starts to go down. 
and you're going to reach this state that's called the theta state, T-H-E-T-A, if I pronounce it correctly. And, and this is brain waves between 7 and 11 hertz, and the, the brain activity comes down. We are all electricity. That's, that's really like, we are all energy. And truly, like, those brain waves go down. And this is when the passive state of meditation occurs. Yeah. And when you're in this state, like one of our teachers that we have also in common, Don Conroe, like great grandmaster in awesome. Gong, was uh, saying true healing only occur in timelessness and spacelessness. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because you almost for durable healing. And, yeah. and this is what sound healing does. It helps you go in that meditative state and that's also why we call it like a passive meditation yeah and so and also you know you you drop from your um i always get these two mixed up but parasymp parasympathetic nerve system into sympathetic or the or vice versa right it's yes so opposite sympathetic yes yeah, and so when you do that, every function in your body is lowered as well, right? It's not like you're on hyperdrive anymore. You're low, in a low, low state, which, you know, like I said before, lowers your breathing, your heart rate, your blood pressure. That's all it. Of those things. And this is crucial in nowadays lifestyle because we are, we talk and we are listened to by a lot of people who are uh, urban lifestyle. And we don't even realize it, but we are most of the time in a f flight or fight yeah. kind of situation. That would be the parasympathetic, um, the sympathetic, sorry, sympathetic. brainwave. And so submitting yourself to the sound healing allows you this full relaxation where suddenly you stop being only in reaction. Yeah. Reaction because your phone is beeped because the phone call is coming because you have an appointment because you have to be here and there and so that's that's truly suddenly this ability to come down into your body and to stop being just in reaction simply so that that would be the first stage of the healing isn't it yeah definitely and, and then like, it's like every meditation right because that is where you're going to go it's into a meditative state right so with every one of those it's like you're building your muscle memory you know every time you go in it's going to be deeper and every time you go in you're you're going to drop much quicker because it's a known quantity your body knows what to do in there your mind knows what to do right and so if it's uh, an hour's sound bath gong bath whatever you know maybe you find that within five minutes you're already in that so you've got 55 minutes suddenly of being in that space and it's like a real reset for your mind and body don't you find i find that it is i find myself it's funny because i have a lot of resistance myself i'm a practitioner i should not be i mean i should not have any of this but it took me a long time as well to to let go to be able to lie down and I was, I use the word submit myself too, which is funny that I say that, yeah. but it's, it's, it's really that it's yeah. really like, surrender. This, you know, in all these practices, we tell people, you have to let go. You have to let go of what no longer serves you. You have to let it. It's extremely difficult. It's just when you're not used to it and you're not, it's extremely, so the resistance I think as well as a sound healer, when you go to a sound bath, there's a tiny little bit of your brain, yeah. right? Going, how is she doing that? What are they doing? There's yeah. like you, the technical thing switches in, right? Especially if it's something that really grabs you. If not being judgmental as well. Judging. Well, yeah, that too. <laughs> wrong. <laughs> there is no wrong, Ev. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm learning that every day. <laughs> Tell me that, what kind of... Um, uh treatment do you offer like if someone who's listening has never had a sound therapy yeah what are what are the types of treatment that you offer in your practice okay so um i do a couple of monthly um sound baths and generally speaking they are mainly tibetan bowls 
um, just because gongs are big and heavy. <laughs> so I will use hand gongs in them, but I like the bowls more um, for that kind of thing. And then I do sound massage, which is the one-to-one -one where the bowls are played directly onto your body, but you also receive the sound bath at the same time. So the sound is constant, but the contact fluctuates. Yes. Um, and to tie in with what we were talking about, I mean, a one-on-one -on -one always starts with the equivalent of a sound bath. And the reason is that, so you're gonna have, and I'm talking to people who might be listening to us, you're gonna have about 10, 15 minutes of this exercise of putting you, putting the patient into that state of this theta state, like lowering the brain wave yeah. so that the patient can be receptive and receive then the frequencies and the vibration, right? Yeah. And so we have about 10, 15 minutes. I think you do it this way as well. Yeah. 10, 15 minutes to make sure that the patient is in the state required, right? So that would be the first phase of a one-on-one -on -one, pretty much. Yeah. And then comes the ball. Yeah. And so it's... To the body. Yeah. It's um, the massage because, um, well... You know, if you've ever held a Tibetan bowl, whenever you strike that thing, the vibration that it gives off is can be huge, right? Um, and I use big, fairly heavy bowls for that, for that purpose alone. And so not only is your body receiving the sound frequency, but the muscles and, and the bone and every tissue in between is receiving the vibration from the bowl. And so that as well has the added power of shaking out toxins, relaxing the muscle and white tissue, um, you know, raising um, circulation and those kind of things. I mean, it, the, the things you can treat with a sound massage are, it's a huge field. And it's, it's a, you know, it's physical and it's emotional and it's a spiritual thing too. I think we're gonna get to that. Um... And I would like you, you're going to tell us about the type of ailments you've been able to treat with sound healing. Mm. Uh, I feel like this is good on the talk to talk about the science behind, behind sound healing. Yeah. Uh, the last sound bath that we've done together, I remember like when it was finished, I kind of walked past two ladies who had attended and the conversation was about do you believe in sound healing? And I was like, oh, come on, I want you to say something. Yeah, it's sure. something. There is a science behind it. And we're only starting to realize and to put kind of the practice on the trial, clinical trial, because this is how modern medicine works. To, yeah. They have to reproduce an experiment to decide that, to conclude that, oh, yes, it works for this, it works for that. Yeah. except that mind, body, and soul are not exactly just square and, you know, no. that way, right? Yeah. So if we talk for a minute about the science behind it, um, I think like the two main principles that we can share with our audience today are the, phenom the phenomena of resonance and entrainment, mainly. Yeah. Um, and so resonance is like if you take two glasses of the same shape and right and you you hit them you're gonna hear like a crystal sound or whatever you hit them and they're gonna resonate with each other so meaning that they are on the same frequency yeah. so every time that you do a sound healing with you know um, a patient actually every time the ball resonates every frequency, every cell in our body has a frequency. Yeah. We think our, our, as our bodies are as material. And then we realize that actually, when you go into a cell of your skin, if you go inside, you're going to find, you know, well, the inside of the, the cell, the nucleus, and inside this nucleus, you're going to find the, the DNA. And inside the DNA, well, surprise, there's nothing. 99.9% .9 of emptiness. And when we say emptiness, like quantum physics, like back in the 50s, 60s, they started to realize that we call it like dark energy and dark matter. 
Yeah. We don't really know what it is made of and it feels like it's hollow. So instead of thinking of our bodies as like 70% water, it's best to actually think that we are 99% emptiness or at least 95% we find out. And the allopathic medicine that treats us today is a medicine that believes that we are 100% material. And we believe that that's where lies the mistake because so now if you think of your body as a sponge right like it's more like a cave kind of like contain it's in ayurveda we say we have ether space is an element as well and within that the frequencies and the frequencies we play with the balls or the gong resonates and so you feel the vibration and they travel through the body and through this phenomenon of resonance and entrainment, so resonance I just explained, entrainment is now when frequencies are not the same, but on the same octave. So time two every time. So you have a do and then do, and it's the same, it's the same note, yes. except in a different octave. And the bigger one is gonna entrain with the small one. And this is what happened to our cells. So there is a science that's called cymatics yeah. and uh, you can find it on YouTube, right? And it's quite striking. They take this metal plate and they pour like either salt or very fine powder or sand or whatever and submit the metal plate to frequencies. And this is quite striking to see how the sand organizes itself in geometric pattern. Yeah. It's like harmony is suddenly, and, and that's what we can't explain. So in allopathic science or Western medicine, when you can't explain, it doesn't exist, except you can see it, right? So you can see those like amazingly, and finally the, the highest the pitch, right? The more complex the design, the geometric design is. I'm gonna wave to my beautiful Khalia is here. Mm -hmm. And Sylvie is here, and Wondrous Sound has joined us. Yeah. Sorry. Post it too, I think. Hi. So, so this is, yeah, resonance and entrainment really are the two factors. It comes from quantum physics. Quantum physics. There are like tons of articles. You have some on your website. I have some on my website. I mean, there is more and more research on it. They start to treat cancer, cancer cancers with, with, it's a non-invasive practice. It's just the beginning of the research on it. But the idea is that you play a frequency and it's gonna either resonate or entrain some of your cell. And what it does is that it reorganizes those cells. It gets rid of the old one, of the sick one actually. And we find this in cancer treatment. Yeah. Um, and it's just fascinating, isn't it? I'm sorry, I just go on about it because I feel like people don't understand the science behind it. And so they keep on thinking that this is some kind of woo-woo practice that's yeah. not... You're right. Um, you know, even on a, on a micro level, what I see in my patients, yeah, I know that the sounds and vibration is so good at tapping into those little emotional stores that we have, right? The physical emotional stores. And, you know, there's still a lot of people out there that don't actually realize that emotion is not just stored in your head and memory and in your brain. It isn't at all. It's stored physically everywhere in your body. And, every, you know, every cell. Yeah. And, you know, there was, um, was it Candice Pert? Candice Pert wrote a book in the late 70s, early 80s, where she had um, got molecules of emotion and put them under a microscope and she identified that grief molecule has one shape like a cymatic right and a sadness molecule is a completely different shape it looks completely different physiologically right and this stuff sticks to our cells yeah so i know that when i do sound on people the vibration it hits that and it shakes it out and then your body, the reason when you're in theta, your body's natural healing ability comes in to clear all of that away. And that's basically how this works, right? Yes, and only in a relaxed state can you actually heal. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, 
there will next week I'm I'm inviting uh, um, Lady Berenice who is a, a therapeutic yoga teacher and she is specialized in actually depression stress and anxiety and even though her practice is entirely different from sound healing mm. everything she sees is exactly the same thing is how our emotion are stored in every part of our body. Yeah. I mean, I'm an, Ayurveda, an Ayurvedic practitioner and I see that in my practice every day. Okay. Every, there is not one illness and one patient that's not linked their illness or disease or imbalance, depending on the degree, to emotion. And as a matter of fact, it comes and stores itself a different part of your body depending on your dosha your constitution yeah yeah so that's that's it so tell me like very concretely what are again to give examples to our audience what are the the illnesses or imbalances that you have managed to get rid of emotionally and physically because i think people feel like it's all emotional very again like esoteric kind of thing but it's also very tangible physically yeah and um, so um the two that really stick out to me that were kind of life-changing for these people so they came and said um sciatica is a problem right so pain in the lower back down the legs psoas muscle tight glutes all of that right vata like, uh -huh. vata people vata people very <laughs> And so um, literally one of them had said to me, 20 years, this is a problem on and off. Sometimes when it really flares up, I can't even put my own socks on in the morning. I can't put on my shoes. When I get out of bed, it's painful. And sometimes it subsides and it's manageable and it's okay, right? But living on painkillers and all of that stuff, goes yeah. to physio, tries exercise, whatever. I'm not joking, Ev, in one session I did I concentrated there very much. Like I, I treated the body holistically because we know this is, you know, everything's connected, right? But in one session, it had gone completely. And the guy contacts me three months later and said, it has never come back. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I had the same with a lady for her knee. She had like a bad knee for seven or eight years. We did two sound healing. And she's like, she still doesn't have a, a knee problem. I mean, it will come back potentially if she doesn't take care of other stuff, like yeah. her diet, this and that and other things, because yeah. that becomes a weakness. And this is where, you know, if she's in... It attracts like a magnet, right? Where it's going to manifest. But it's quite striking. I think you did like, because um, I had this experience as well, like calculi. Didn't you uh, heal someone from stones, I mean? Uh, yeah, I did. Yeah, I mean, he didn't know that they were there. And so I didn't know either. Yeah, a guy came to me for a sound massage and, um, you know, loved it at the time. It was really calming. It was so nice and soothing and blah, blah, blah. I check in on him the next day and he's like, I feel really sick. I don't know what's going on with me. High temperature. I have pain in my back and my sides. Yeah. Anyway, he contacted me about 10 days after that and said, I've been to the doctor because the pain just wouldn't go. And it was causing problems with toilet and all of this stuff. He said, I passed a kidney stone, but it was, it had obliterated. Yeah, it was in pieces, right? And um, he goes to his doctor because of this and they said, oh, he, it's a kidney stone, but we don't know how how have you smashed it apart and how has it come out like that? Because yeah. usually you have to have laser for this or whatever. Or and surgery. Or yeah. surgery, yeah. Um, and he said, well, I had a sound healing. That's the only thing I can think of that would have done that. And he said, so, you know, it wasn't pleasant to pass this stuff and it, and it was painful and not nice for a few days, but he was so grateful after that and like not even knowing that they were there. And I would imagine they were probably quite small at that time, but obviously not knowing they were there later down the line, if they weren't found, they would have caused him major problems, right? Yeah, I had the same story, but uh, the guy knew he had, he had the kidney stones 
He was due for surgery four weeks later. We had, he was already very in pain, very much in pain. And he came for sound healing because someone told him that it could be good, blah, blah, blah. The first session was about reducing the pain and he was really happy because at least he didn't have, you know, this dull pain that's always yeah. there. And it's not so, it's not like a, it's not like a flare up, but it's always kind of latent and, and around in the background. Yeah. So he was really happy because that kind of get, we got rid of that. But then suddenly the pain came back and I told him, okay, let's do, and this is the problem for me with sound healing, I find. It's like, it takes so much, you know, your gear is so heavy and you can't take it everywhere. And it's, yeah. it means that patients have to come back to you. And, but he came back a second time a few days later and we organized another three sessions of only 45 minutes, but every day. Right. Because he was so happy that the pain has gone, had, had gone except that it was at the very beginning that I was practicing sound healing as well. So I didn't have much experience then. Yeah. And after the fourth time, the guy called me and said, I'm in excruciating pain. I don't know. This is why I was smiling earlier when you said that. Yeah. It's like, oh my God, what did I do? <laughs> I mean, like, what, what's wrong with me? And, and not knowing what to do as well. And he ended up going to the, the emergency, to the A&E, which is not great. You think, oh my God, what did I do? Yeah, sure. And he just had passed the kidney stones and he never had to have the surgery. Awesome. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. just this kind of stuff, right? Yeah. But we were told that, right, in training, we knew that this was a possibility and that it's very effective on those kind of things, right? Yeah. Isn't it funny how, like, to heal really, I mean, sorry for the language, pardon my French, really, that's what it is, but it seems like to heal, you, you have to go to shit before it gets better. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. It's like, it's what the body does. It's like, yeah. It's, yeah. I see it with my Ayurvedic medicines as well sometimes. Yeah. You prescribe something and first it's just, not for a long time, but yeah, it goes worse. Yeah, before it can worse. Sorry, before it can actually heal itself. Yeah, because I think that's part of your body's response, right? It's like it it has to drag you down and make you still, in order to really effectively clear this stuff out, right? Yeah, and the clearing is painful. Yeah, it can be. Yeah. Yeah. So we were talking about your treatments. So you do one on one, yes. obviously the sound massage. Let's say because that's when the ball are placed everywhere on the. And and what can how long are your sound massage for those who have not had it? Like, it averages about forty five minutes. You know, no two treatments are the same. No two people are the same, right? So it's around that. Unless someone comes to me with a chronic thing, and and we decide that maybe it's going to take a lot a little longer or. Or like you said, you know, they need to come back to you more times or whatever. But it's around 45 minutes to an hour. Um, okay. Not short, actually. Yeah, because, well, the thing that I learned from when we did our training was if you do a two-hour session, people can't walk after. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I true. It's like no driving, no walking, no, no nothing. No, it's like someone's given you Valium sometimes. So that was my experience anyway. It's like you cannot operate heavy machinery. <laughs> that's true. That's right. That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. What else? Um, sometimes I do a combination of yoga and sound as well, which is uh, sound massage and um, physical yoga. So yeah. what I think that is great for is it gets the patient into that mindset as well that they are responsible for their own well-being. It's like it's great to go to a practitioner and go, fix me, you know, but that's, that's like putting a Band-Aid on, right? If you don't start to take responsibility for your own health, well-being, you know, all of that stuff, then, you know, it's, it's really only going to be a short-term fix, right? So. Yeah. Yeah, doing the physical stuff is part of like them get catching on to the fact that, you know, yes, I can help you, but really you're the only one that's going to help yourself in the long term, you know? Yeah. 
this is why Ayurveda gives you a diet, but Ayurveda also gives you uh, advice and serious life changes, you yeah. know, kind of. Um, so what are like, to go back to sound sound, what are your favorite? What do you work with most? Is it the gong? Is it the, there's always a debate between gongs and balls. Um, okay, so my personal experience, the strongest um, changes I've had for me, positive changes and strongest experiences have been in Gong Puja. And we were talking about this the other day, right? So that's seven and a half hours of sounds where you... Can you sleep, explain? Yeah. Or sleep through it or you meditate or whatever you want to do with that. But yeah, seven and a half hours of gentle frequency is life-changing. It um, was... That's, yeah. There's no other word for it, yeah. you know, frankly. Um, I love to experience that myself. Um, I think, you know, I used to do gong one-to-one -one treatments where I would sit one side of the gong and the person would sit the other side. And it came as an intuitive thing to me to treat the gong that I'm looking at, right? Because they can't see me, I can't see them. But the gong is the person, the whole person, right? So they're like the circle in front of me, yeah? And so if they're saying to me, they have pain in their shoulder here, then I play the gong there. And directly it goes through this part of their body, right? But my intention and focus is their shoulder. And, and that used to be a super effective treatment. But because the person's sitting in the chair, it's quite a short treatment, yeah? So that would be 20 minutes or half an hour. Because if they go too deep, they're gonna fall off the chair. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I never do this treatment actually. I do one on one and I do gong bath, but I don't I've never done the the gong one on one. It's true. I it's interesting, yeah. Yeah, it was so it really illustrated to me it's a quick result and they quite um definite results as well, you know. Nice. And it's quite nice if you're holding a clinic of doing that all day, the flow of people coming through and like and no one's too heavy after that. And no one's too, you know, out of it, dopey or whatever. Every, everything's quite light and upbeat and lifted, you know, mm. because yeah. it's a short session. Um, and so what do you think of the gong versus, versus the Tibetan balls in terms of healing? Um, I think they're, you know, it's primordial sound, right? You could be using a didgeridoo. You could be using your voice. And you could be, you know, using all manner of things, yeah, bells and chimes or whatever it is, right? It's about the person's commitment to themselves. So how deep are they willing to go? How much are they willing to let go, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then I think the, the rest of it's just down to your personal preference, right? Yeah, I think it's very personal indeed. I, I remember those gong trainings where which were filled with testosterone, I felt, you know, like there's something tricky about the gong playing in gong players, where sometimes I think we are all guilty of our, you know, ego stuff, like, you know why that is, don't you? So, it's so big, right? And yeah. it's so empowering. And like, how do I play it? Like, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Suddenly when I come back to the ball, I feel like it's, I feel like the balls are healing you like at a micro level and that the gong is so deep and powerful. It's like macro, you know, it's like the, your whole being is being like you submerge really yeah. like, oh, you know, the, you can't resist. But I love this, the, the, the tiny long frequencies of those beautiful balls. Actually, I should mention a quickly hear that you came back from Nepal like two months ago and you came back with just like a collection of amazing balls. Yeah. So for whoever wants to buy their first ball, it's probably a good thing to be in touch with you. I mean, I'm not, Ooh. I'm just saying that because it's difficult to buy balls which are fairly priced and are good quality and not like made in a factory, which is the biggest thing. And so, yeah, I just wanted to mention that, like whoever wants to buy their first ball and... Yeah, after... that, that really is part of my calling because, you know, you go to shows or you find <coughs> a place that sells just bowls, right? The prices are so extortionate and then it tips you into this elitist thing, right? That's it, when where... it should be 
for everyone. Yeah, where you can only have these amazing instruments if you've got loads of money. And for me, that's, that goes against the whole ethos of what we do, right? Yeah, Don Conroe would say, we had a joke going, Don Conroe, the, the, the great grandmaster in Gong, uh, would say, a gong in every house. A yeah. gong. We said, my God, this is a domain name, you know, a gong in every yeah. house. Because how do you heal yourself? Just put a gong in your, in your living room yeah. and just sit down and meditate there and hit the gong or you have a pain on your knee, buy a ball, just hit the ball on your knee yeah. by yourself. You know, yeah. like we can help with like the bigger stuff, but as an everyday thing, yeah. I just want to, just want to say to everyone, just, just bring it in and, and use it. Because those vibrations are, I would say, you know, the lower tone, like very, one very high pitch ball, one very low pitch, you know, very ground, kind of ground like, you know, the big voice. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what? This talk is supposed to be 45 minutes. We are at 42 minutes. We could have talked for another hour, unfortunately. I know, right? I'm thinking like if anybody has questions, it's a good time to ask them. Oh, thanks, Paul, for that comment. That's lovely. I didn't see. Why is it that I don't see any comments? Oh, my Paul God. Says, when I have some money, I'll definitely be buying bowls from Natalie. I absolutely trust her bowl and sound choices. Yes. So, thank you for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's um, just having like, a couple at home and you can help yourself. I mean, it's just, I don't know if she's be, she'll be happy for me to say that, but my daughter has like excruciating period pains. And she's very, she was very skeptical a few years back when mommy started to be like a, a woo-woo hippie doing sound healing, right? But I put a big ball on, on like where the ovary, the lower, the lower belly. Yeah. Not even giving her proper sound healing, but just that and hitting the ball and she starts to, like the pain recedes and suddenly she falls asleep and she wakes up and she's like, oh my God, I can't believe it. Yeah. Now she goes in the back room, takes a ball for by herself. If she has a pain somewhere, yeah. she takes the ball and put it on her. Yeah. She hits it, hits the ball while doing something else. So oh, I feel much better. Yeah. I think it helps it, with so many that, things like if your chest feels tight even you know sometimes I've felt like you know in the winter when the weather changes your chest starts feeling tight and you're like I mm, hope that's not turning into anything major but even that like to play the bowl on your chest suddenly you breathe again it's this, clearing yes know? yes yeah. yes and again I think like if you have a nice bowl yeah. it's very long sounding you know long sounding is that end note that's like, ooh, it just pierces through you yeah. and it does put you back in the parasympathetic state that we were talking about. And it does, a, it makes a whole difference. It yeah. does make a huge difference at this small level anyway. So Nat, uh, you talked briefly about the Gong Puja. Yeah. Uh, I think not everybody knows what it is. So I'm just gonna say it very quickly. Um, Yogi Bhajan, who is like, let's say, the father of modern Kundalini Yoga, who was actually um, the guru of Don Conroe, I mentioned a couple of times during this talk, um, said that in theory, if you were to play the gongs like 45 minutes, 10 times, right? Was it nine times or 10 times? 10 times. Yeah. 10 times 45 minutes and you would pretty much be able to cure anything. So That's to right. take of salt obviously but there's something behind it and so on that you know based on that Don Conroe again uh, decided to invent a puja which is like in India let's say it's a, it's a prayer it's a ceremony I want to say an offering right it's an offering yeah, yeah. and so he invented that concept of having like 10 times 45 minutes of gong playing right yeah. and this is what you're gonna do because i think you have one coming up so ba first of all i'm not sure everybody knows but you're based in itching which is north london and you do have a puja coming up sometimes next yeah next week next month it's on the full moon in july 
on the 23rd of July. Okay, so yeah. that's something people can contact you for because that would be a great thing. What else do you have upcoming? Um, we're, I'm going to do a small weekend retreat in November um, over the fireworks weekend. And it's called Remember, Remember, because at the moment, so it ties in obviously with the fireworks, right? But um, at the moment, I'm all about people remembering who they really are, right? So whether that's your empowerment now in this lifetime or your greater purpose while you're here. So it's going to be, there's going to be lots of different ways into that. Um, but basically it's about that, that, you know, the culmination at the end of it is remember that you're not this, this, you know, tiny little, I can't make a difference person, right? Because none of us are, you know, what you were saying before, I find this really interesting about, you know, 99% of us is space, right? And that space is the void. And in the void, there is infinite possibility. Yeah, that's what the void is. It's yeah. like anything from here is possible. So we're 99%, anything is possible, right? Yeah. And that's what I want to try and bring to the fore with this um, retreat. So it's just yeah. a small one in November um, because, you know, things are a bit crazy this year. But um, Yes, we, yeah. we were not really what's going to happen. Yeah. So, but that's another thing that I will talk about in another talk and we can do it together and I will bring in someone who who is into plant medicine. And I mean by that, uh, hallucinogenic plants like ayahuasca and mushrooms and stuff like that. And because we are obviously discovering of the benefits of that, it was about time. And actually there is a study in Australia that came up about exactly that, about how sound healing has biologically the exact same effects that um, plant medicine do have you know and so this is why a lot of people have experiences of you know kind of visions during a sound bath and visions of where they should go and visions of colors and vision of space and yeah. and all this and other stuff and it, it, it does work and there's this amazing study in australia that's really a breakthrough study that i think is almost worth just a 45 minute minutes talk just yeah. on that yeah so i'll try to do this as well and so I guess, remember, remember, where is the retreat, Nat? It's in Wales. It's in Wales. Okay. Yeah, okay. It's, it was a former convent, this building, and it's, it's got huge amounts of grounds. There's waterfalls, there's forests nearby. And, you know, um, it's about being in nature and it's about coming back to our nature, you know, and it's all going to be tied in like that. But basically, it's a small group because I think that um, the dynamic works better that way. Yeah. And... Um, yeah, it's just, you know, about being honest and being you and bringing your whole self and all of that kind of thing. And yeah. That's brilliant. Uh, I think you also do, um, I mean, I'm not sure you, I know you do, but do you have dates on sound training for those who want to learn how to heal themselves and heal people with sound? Um, I, at the moment, I'm doing those dates on a like ad hoc basis. And I'm doing all of my sound training one-to-one -one because venues have been so flaky that yeah. it's just more trouble than it's worth. And actually, it's quite nice to do one-to-one. -one. Well, I'm okay. sure that's always better. Yeah. There's no on. animosity around like asking what you think might be a stupid question or spending the amount of time you really need to understand the thing that we're doing at the time right whereas in a group yes. sometimes you feel a bit like oh i don't i don't want to say that like why am i not getting it? you know what i mean yeah well I, it's a process so obviously it can't be it can only be better yeah <laughs> <laughs> they are so, yeah. okay anything else we want to say before it's the end of that any sound healers that are watching i'm imploring you all use your voice this is our next talk. Okay, yeah. I have to say very quickly, I will invite Nat another time, if not many other times, but <laughs> another time I want to talk about, because Nat does something that is quite inspired, I want to say, or spirited. I'm not sure how to say it, but, and I'm sorry, I'm going to give you a lot of compliments now, but you are you really did find your voice like quite literally 
And I know that you have another type of treatment that um, in, involves light language. Yeah, I and, don't like the label of light language, but yes, yeah. for an understanding, it's similar to that, yeah. For understanding, yeah. So let's say it's spontaneous healing and intuitive healing, and that this is actually a treatment that you do involving your voice, so there is some, some singing, and also uh, some of that amazing language. Yes. You've done it on me, and I was just like, wow. Like, I, I don't even know still how to express what I went through. It was just amazing. And it's quite shamanic, actually, I want to say. I think it's very much like coming from ancestral traditions. And I know it's not that you learn it. This is something that you trust yourself and with and that comes out of you. And it's just beautiful and amazing. And I think we will have another talk on, on this subject as well because it's yeah. truly like, wow. Yeah, I mean, we can go into that more. But yeah, the other thing I wanted to say about the sound therapy is it's not just about fixing something you perceive to be wrong, right? It's also such a massive activator. You know, if you have gifts that you have no idea what they are, yeah, we all do, right? We all have these special things in us, right? That some people might call magic or whatever, right? Our own form of magic. Sound is the thing that has drawn all of that out of me. Yeah. And, you know, this is not a quest for me. You know, light language, I had no idea what that was a couple of years ago. No idea at all. And like, you know, you put the label of like shamanism on it because it was similar to your experience of that, right? Yeah. But I knew nothing about this. I didn't go on a quest to research all of this and like be that thing, you know? This is like come to me through my own journey of sound. Yeah, it's, uh, I, yeah, I never think of that. And I think it's indeed a very, very good point. A very good point. It's an activator. It unblocks things at this emotional level and it just reveals things yeah. and uh, yeah. Well, I want to thank you so much. We have to do this again because Definitely. that was brilliant. Thanks, Ev, it's been lovely. What an experience. So that was a tribe talk with Nat, Natalie, sorry, Jane Lal, <laughs> a great sound healer. And just, I just want to say really thank you for being part of this. We'll do it again. Thank you for all of you to have joined. And um, we'll announce some more on Instagram, more talks, more talks. The point is to have talks with people like we are a tribe and like-minded people who feel like, you know, we can heal another way and not with medicine and chemical crap most of the time. I'm not against it. Sometimes it saves our lives too, but I'm just saying there are other ways. And how to heal chronic diseases with Ayurveda, with yoga, with um we talking and, and 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 just meeting with yeah. you know this tribe so and also the tribe knowing that you're not alone out there you're not weird yeah. we're growing and that's a great thing <laughs> yes and we need to grow like yes we do okay much love to all much love to you nat thank you so much you are. thanks everyone and i can't wait to do it again yeah me too all right happy day guys <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.